I'm Brennan Baker, BB Miniatures, and welcome to my latest video. Games Workshop has kindly sent me an early copy of Legions Imperialis to paint up, and in this video, I'll be going all about my thoughts on the new kits, as well as how it's been going about painting them as white scars. First off, straight away, these miniatures are tiny. I mean, look at these cute little space rings and solar auxilia. But a perfect size and scale when you place them next to your Titans and Aeronautica models, which if you've been painting or playing the game, this brings it all under one rule and one set under the battlefield. Be sure I'll be painting some of the new Titans and future aircraft in future tutorials to my Patreons. When it comes to the miniatures themselves, especially the infantry, I think it's a lot more fair to judge the sculpts with two distinct vantage points. First off, looking at each individual marine, the distinct details of each are pretty solid. You can identify the silhouettes of the marine well, with the studded shoulder pads, uh, the bolter chain bayonet on the tactical marines, the power packs, and the beaky helms of the Mark VI. Where we see some of the problem areas are actually on the bridge fill between joints mainly around the bolter magazine and backfilled areas running from the foregrip arm as well as the fill between the legs in one of the positional models. I was questionable about these areas and concerns as I think many of them are out there when I saw the various images posted online. Also the little rounded mound that each marine stands on can be a bit annoying to view, but that was the least of my worries in comparison to the other two mentioned above. Also note, these gaps are mainly on the tactical marines only. Taking a look at the other miniatures that are in the power armor form, which is the assault marines, tactical support marines that are holding plasma guns, as well as the rocket launcher marines, don't really suffer from this problem at all. It's mainly because of the bolts are in chain bayonet. I was initially thinking that I should clip and shave these away, but then I really had to stop and think about it. Doing that will really eat into the time that would compound over many, many, many little miniatures, as well as had to change my perspective on it entirely. When you put five of these little dudes on a single base and view them from around an arm's length away, these details start to melt away, leaving only the main silhouette. Getting some paint on them further convinced me that those hiccups in the model quality were fine and overlooked once you have them all painted and grouped together on the base. So, and two, if you're really painting these little dudes for the camera, a diorama where details are a must, I'm looking at golden demon entries, I would highly suggest shaving this off and re-sculpting it carefully. Otherwise, if your main idea is to paint them up for a gaming piece, you'll honestly lose sight of this molding issue and find other areas to spend your time on other details. Further thinking on the matter as to why this design decision was made, I think it has some leverage as to make the model more durable as well. The chain bayonets are placed on there to help identify them from the plasma gun infantry, as they look very similar. Those models don't suffer from the large bridge like I said, then the tactical marines which is great. When placing them on the tabletop and viewing it from your vantage standing view, units need to have a clear identifying silhouette. As much as to say that players should just paint the plasma to look different, Keep in mind, not everyone has the brush skills and or even the effort of painting regardless of what I like to see put on my own models. I wouldn't be surprised if many just choose to paint a single color, wash it, and call it done. And that's fine if that's how far you want to take your painting for the Legions Imperialis. The vehicles on the other hand is where I think the scale of this kit really excel and where most of the joy is in painting. Small enough of course, but with the details that fill out these moving boxes well. And who hasn't dreamed about moving an entire legion of transports, dropping them from the skies filled with drop pods, or my favorite where flyers really feel at home in the game on the tabletop. Overall, my impression of the models are great. For a game that allows me to paint up a force in a good reasonable time, and where I can stick to painting those for primary for the game. One that lets me display the fifth across, across a large number of miniatures and in a scale that simply doesn't allow me to go into more detail. I'll be enjoying participating in the heresy setting in this way much faster than it takes me to ready my scars for a big size game of heresy. I think I could go into more details of the painting, but it would honestly be painting for the photograph and not really be well, well appreciated enough unless everyone is walking around with a big 105 macro lens. 
I'll be saving the harder paint jobs for larger scales and or larger models in Legion's Imperial Loss and enjoy more relaxing painting sessions with these small guys. Speaking of, let's get into my recipe for the White Scars. For painting something of this scale and to work efficiently to cover a lot of infantry miniatures, I suggest going down to your local craft or grocery store and picking up some wooden craft sticks, popsicle or barbecue skewers. I would then take each miniature, which I've cleaned a little bit of the rim and flash, and use a tiny dot of super glue and glue it to the skewer. Just a small dab. It's easy to take a modeling blade and shear it off at the end and ready to be glued down to the base once it's painted. I always glue them down in blocks of five to easily count the number of bases I'll need to prep and help me to arrange an assortment of various poses to a single stand, so as to avoid a base full of five models all rocking the same pose. I'll be using an airbrush to get the white ivory color down. Now I want to mimic my larger cousins of my 30k army, so I'll be taking those colors in a more simplified two stages. First off is base coating the entire model with AK dark green gray. I went ahead and didn't use the VMC model color mix, as these models are too tiny that the slight change wouldn't really make a difference in the scale, as well as I know that color from VMC of the Nocturna set is somewhat rare and I'm not sure how much longer they're actually producing that, so I might as well save that for the colors when it really counts. Second is going ahead and applying the ivory through the airbrush. Focusing our spray angle coming directly above and around a 45 degree angle. This will create our shadows of dark green gray, and with this mixture, it's important to have a one to one mix of paint to thinner. This helps with keeping the layers light and provides a softer transition. I did, however, on larger vehicles, such as the rhinos, put in an intermediate layer of green sky. I did this thinking there would be more surface transition space and it'll help me blend the area process. But for the infantry especially, I skipped the green sky. As for the rest of the white armor blend comes with the final stage that brings it all together. After the white is laid down, it's now time to bust out the fine detail brush and the wet palette. Getting out the blood red by AK, it's time to make those white scars markings that really give the visual identity markings of the Legion. The key here is to make simplified markings and take some liberty of the scale that we have to work with. Making little triangles for the sawtooth patterns are not so much to scale as it is made so we can identify them on the tabletop. The right blank shoulder pad is an excellent spot to put this, and I've counted on average around 4 triangles can fit in there roughly, 4 or 5, depending how small you can make them. The last two that curve around the rear are barely seen, so just make sure the front facing ones are the cleanest and the ones to fuss about, if anything. Copying my base of 30k marines more, I block out helmets, the odd shoulder pad, hands, and power pack orms exhaust, all with blood red. Icons I would use red dots seen on the shoulder pads, forehead, and knee guards. I like the clan icon from the Forge World White Scars decal sheet, and the red dot is a substitute again for that simplified version of this. It also helps that I use larger red, larger red filled circles as well, so it's a win-win. You can paint little legion lightning bolts as well, <laughs> but honestly, it's a bit too tedious in my book to mark every single show to pad with this. I just left those for the vehicles and the larger banners and the cons I'll be riding in my army. 
I really think for the scale you have to pick your battles, and I want to do something that was enjoyable enough for the time I can set aside for it. My main focus was to see this project as a whole across a lot of miniatures. One of the main characteristics of my white scars is that everyone is different. Every single model has a different combination of markings and patterns to illustrate the freedom to express themselves in the art of war. For in this epic scale, I'll do my best to illustrate this, but inevitably there will be some duplicates. But I've been thinking I've been doing a pretty well enough job to portray it thus far. To give the red a bit of punch, I've highlighted the red with dead red, dotting highlights on the helmets and such. On the vehicles such as rhinos, I've actually left the red pretty flat. There's a lot of edges on those vehicles, and honestly I don't want to be carving out every single edge highlight on every single surface. The washes I'll be doing later will help with a bit of depth, and I think it looks fine. I think it's much better to have the stronger silhouette of the rhino or of the vehicle and just have the nice color, the contrasting color between the red and the white and make it look defined and I think that's fine. Moving into the guns and metallics, I originally painted the, bol <laughs> the bolters in tenebrous grey and then made a highlight with a medium grey. Again, yes, it gives a tiny extra detail, but for the time and the amount of these you gotta do, I don't think it was really worth it. I use exhaust manifold metallics from VMC to dot in the barrels, and I would later do this with the whole bolter just to simplify the metallic afterwards. Again, it's to save time and rather put my enter <laughs> rather put my efforts into details that I would have a bigger payout. I'm not even a fan of painting guns in anyways. So I think cutting out the painting stage is the right way to go for me. Elven gold was used for any gold metallic characters, namely in the con and the sergeants. Now with those elements finished, we can give the entire model a nice coat of gloss varnish. I've used the AK 3rd gen gloss varnish on mine through the airbrush, but really any brand will just do fine. This gloss varnish surface will assist us with two things. First, if there's any decals we want to apply, this is the time to do it. Now on the infantry, there isn't going to be any space really to put them. I'm glad since I didn't want to apply over 100 infantry decals in the first place. The decal sheet provides in legions both the starter set and the expanded legion sheet that comes in the vehicle kit, the Rhino and Kratos kits, so far that I've seen. Come with icons for all 18 legions as well as the generic numerals in a gothic imperial theme. Some legions I find it got better than others, but this decal sheet unfortunately it's all in black and white. But I would recommend the 3rd K White Scars Legion decal sheet as there are many icons that can fit on the various kits from the dreadnought size and upwards in the vehicles. In the command section for your con and the legion standard which can fit a couple icons on the banner as well. Personally, the Chagorn rectangular characters are great and I've fitted many of them on my tanks and contemptor hulls, as well as legion icons such that I think they're much more lively than the black icons given in the legion kit. Get these on there and finish with another coat of gloss varnish and let dry and get ready for the next stage. Being patient with all the previous steps, with all that tiny freehand, you're ready to give them an enamel pin wash. Getting a couple of metal dishes out would be very useful for this pin wash. The enamel wash colors I used again are from AK Wargame washes. Now I have two different mixes that I've created. The first darker and more saturated green matches my initial white scars green theme. I painted these when they were initially sent to me in the starter set, which that got recalled and the game launch was fortunately delayed. But lucky for me, at that time was also before I reconfigured my White Scars theme to have a more muted green grey tone as I seen in my new Mark III rotor cannons and the Mark VI Melta Gunner miniature, which I've also created a full tool, a full YouTube tutorial on. For the dark, stronger green look, 
I mixed roughly a ratio of 2 to 1 of green wash to deep blue wash. If you want my current and less saturated green look, we will need to mix a ratio of 3 1 1 of 3 parts grayish green wash, 1 part glue blue gray wash, and 1 part green wash. I've mixed these into some empty Tamiya glass mixing pots, enough for my army to use, and diluted it with a little bit of their fruit scent thinner from AK again, and proceeded to pin wash each model. The gloss varnish does a great job at breaking the surface tension and allowing the wash to creep into the recesses great while gently tinting the rest of the surface. Using a clean brush to dab back and absorb any excess pooling, especially towards the top of the model, while I leave the heavier applications towards the foot or the base of the model. You don't have to be super neat about this as it would be going over all the parts of the model, including the red and the metallics as well. Once this is dry, I will then go over the metallics with a dark wash. Again, let this wash sit and dry completely. I would leave this to sit for a day and come back the next day to finish and handle the model. Or, if you're pressed for time, leave it sitting for around 30 minutes and then take a hair dryer to each model and dry it out quicker. The bases themselves were a bit of a tricky issue. If I want to stay true to my mini version of the My Fifth Legion, I gotta put them on green bases to match. Now, to get the scale of the dirt closer to what I would want without the dirt looking like they're standing on boulders or blades of grass that stand taller than the Astartes, I had to make my own texture paste mix. By mixing snow micro balloons and ice spar sparkles from AK to give me a few variations of very, very fine grains, I mix this with some clear white acrylic resin, something from like uh, water effects or um, a neutral white paste. And finally mixing that with some burnt umber colored pigment. You get a custom textured paint which I can apply over beach base supplied. Making sure to fill in the details that are molded onto the supply of the blaze and just let those dry. So after that, I removed each marine off the skewer stick and put a dab of, you know, some super glue on the base. I rec actually recommend a gap filling super glue that's a little bit thicker as the surface we will glue these little dudes on is not even shaped evenly flat, allowing that to dry and sit there. If you're wondering why you're seeing my face, I really apologize that I've uh, unfortunately have lost some of the footage at the very end. Um, not super critical, I think um, with this explanation you guys can get it, but again I apologize for losing that footage and you just get stuck with me. Anyway, after these are all placed and dry, I would create two pigment washes mixed with the same fruited scented enamel thinner. If you're wondering how to make a pigment wash, I would actually revert back to one of my older tutorials of the Sons of Horus Legion Space Marine, where near the end there, I do make a pigment wash. I do use water in that tutorial, so I mixed uh, water and pigment, dry pigment together make a, uh, to make the wash. But in order to actually skip a stage and allow uh, a better fixture so you don't have to let that pigment, that wash dry, and then use um, a matte varnish or thinners to, um, to fix it dry, we can actually just, instead of using water, we can just substitute the water for enamel thinner. In this case, I use the same fruit scented enamel thinner from AK because, um, well, I'm not smelling it, but it's what I have available. So the pigment washes I make is one with Vallejo Chrome Oxide, which is going to be our darker mix, and then a faded olive green, which is going to be a lighter mix. I apply each of these uh, washes one at a time. I start with the darker one and allow to completely dry. Again, just with the, with enamels, you can always allow just a little bit of drying time, so uh, 20, 30 minutes, so it's a little bit air dry and then just use a hair dryer again if you want to speed up the process. And then applying the green one. 
And then um, after that, you don't have to worry about an even coverage. It's better to go looking for a little bit of a, a, a non-uniform look. So patchiness is okay. You can even allow some of the brown to show up too. This is again just to make it a little more of a natural look. This kind of substitute instead of again gluing down patches of grass, which would be way too large for this scale. Um, I don't worry about getting over the legs of the infantry at all, and I'll supply this to the lower areas of tanks and tracks too. Again, just giving a little more of a natural look. And uh, you know, you've seen the 30k marines, you kind of see how the green kind of bleeds into the into the ivory anyway. Finally, after after all that's dry, I will coat all my models with a spray of Tamiya Flat Clear Enamel Varnish. This comes in a small little spray can. Fortunately, it doesn't come in any larger. It comes in these little 200 or 300 milliliter um, mini, mini spray cans, but I really like this stuff a lot. And it's really good for my gaming pieces as uh, with an enamel finish, it actually dries a lot harder and is a little more resilient and durable, especially to the oils of our skin which we will be picking up all of our models by, especially the tanks, since there's no base for them to pick it up. As well as the flat finish, it really does rival very close to the AK enamel, or sorry, AK's Ultramat varnish. But I actually quite like this finish overall, and I use it on, again, all my gaming pieces. Pretty much with that varnish, you know, our Legion warriors are done. Um, these steps are going to be, of course, I just went over as army as a whole, but with some larger models coming in the form of Thunderhawks and Titans, these pieces will warrant a lot more detail around, and I think I'll be spending a lot more time on them, as well as I'm looking forward to creating a tutorial for the for my White Scholars Thunderhawk gunship, as well as any Titans that I want to include in the future. This is both, both I'll be you know, going through more complex stages, I think there will be a lot more room for more finesse with the airbrush and show you how to do a few more effects and possibly even some little bit of light weathering. I know my white scars are mostly kept pretty clean, but I think it'd be kind of interesting to, to show you guys if you're curious on how this scheme looks with a little bit more, more battle damage. Maybe I can find a way to fit it in there, both for Legions Imperialis, and then maybe a, maybe a, maybe a 30k guy will also get there included. But again, painting for me at Legions Imperialis is just, you know, a fun and nice little break away from the more complicated miniatures of the larger scales and the, you know, the sculpts, what they ask of me. Keeping the scope of the size and the time I want to allocate to this game is a good practice into painting with some restraint. As I'm always eager to dive into details and pushing my skills. Keeping just a few key elements clear and readable markings of the fifth of the ivory white and the undertone of the green, I think it's good enough to present this in the scale. And to get some miniatures ready for the tabletop, roll some dice with some friends, and all in a reasonable time. I know especially my buddies in my gaming club, they finally want to see my scars actually take to the field. Now the 30k army is still a little ways away because I don't, honestly I don't have a ton of time to paint everything for myself but I think Legion's Imperialis will prove that I can actually get a reasonable sized force down to the tabletop in a good amount of time. Well that's all I have time for now. I hope you enjoy this video and my thoughts about the new Legion's Imperialis. Thanks for joining me and I will see you next time. Happy painting.